All right, first of all, this is a WordPress, a WordPress meetup. Um, thank you guys for coming out tonight. I know it's tough to get out on Monday night to the um, After I sent that email out, they moved us again in this much smaller room. This was our biggest RSVP account. We had like 115 people, which is really big for us. It's our biggest event besides WordCamp Boston, so really excited about that. For those of you, <laughs> for those of you who are new, um, I started this group a little over a year ago. It was like seven of us in some dive bar in Cambridge. <laughs> now there's over 400 members. We don't get a lot of them out here, but we need to start getting some more of these people out here. But um, and we have this great space sponsored by Microsoft Pizza and all this stuff. So that's also exciting. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming. Um, all right, so. For anyone, oh yeah, work, uh, the password here is Cambridge Network. There's a wireless password if you guys aren't on yet. Um, a couple of announcements we have. Oh, go back to that. Side. Yeah, all right, so we now have a Twitter account, an official account. It's Boston, Boston WP, so follow him or her um, for information. So we, are, we try to be at the last Monday of every month. Uh, the last Monday night. I know that there's been some people have emailed and says it, and say that, that that doesn't work for them. Um, commuting into Boston sometimes doesn't work. We've explored trying to get space at the Waltham campus, so we might try that. Um, but yeah, we try to be in the last Monday of every month at seven to nine o'clock. In the past couple months, it's been rocky. We haven't had a meetup all the time, so. I sent an email out to everybody. I think that if we absolutely have no speaker or anything, we should at least meet. We should meet somewhere at a you know social event or something. So we will meet every month from now on. We have too many members to just kind of drop the ball, and a lot of people are like, "What's the deal?" So we'll, we'll keep that going. Um, oh, just, I, so, just to let you know, um, the next Boston meetup will be tentatively May twenty fourth. Which oh, right, because the week before, before, before Memorial Day. Yeah. yeah. And we're Memorial still waiting for a month. Yeah. We'll leave it. Um, also, uh, my time has just been limited, and that's attributed to some of that. So we have a new co organizer, and that's Kurt Payne. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt will keep me honest about scheduling me up to doing stuff like that. Um, sponsors? I think you put that there. Yeah, I put sponsors there. Um, we're always looking for sponsors. Um, one of the things that you know we'll get to at the end is we're starting a new website for the Boston WordPress Meetup. It's more of a community where people can ask questions, um, you know, post on forums if you have ideas on themes or need some help. It's a great resource, and we're starting to release it. And this will be at the next slide. But first, um, before we uh, move on to the next one, uh, we are recording all these videos. Um, I set up a camera in the back, so if you have any questions if you miss a WordPress meetup, you know, feel free to visit. Uh, it's it's curting.blip.tv um, and I'll be making all the posts at bostonwp.org so you won't miss a thing. And also all the slides from the meetups will also be posted on SlideShare. We'll also post that on bostonwp.org. Um, so next one. Yeah, so we started on, on meetup.com, and um, we still want to use that to schedule the event, and it has a nice feature where you guys can submit ideas for meetups and things like that. We'll still use that. But we wanted to kind of go beyond meetup, so rather than the Boston WordPress meetup group, we kind of wanted to be Boston's WordPress presence. Or, um, so we registered bostonwp.org. Thanks to Jim for that recommendation. Remind, remind me that .org domain still exists. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. So, we're, like Kurt said, we're going to post videos, meeting slides, things like that. Um, I thought it'd be kind of interesting if we could allow people to like create a presence there. And if you're a freelancer or you have like a WordPress shop, kind of you know create a profile there and let people know what you do, and then have people in the group go and be able to search if they're looking for design work, development work, just kind of like an internal community, just so people can get something out of this. I mean, there's 400 people now, so if you're looking for something WordPress related and you should be able to join this community and, and be able to connect with you know, great talent in Boston. So I don't know how it's going to work. We'll send us feedback. And it goes back to this last bullet point, less spam. I mean, we have the meetup.com mailing list, and sometimes you just don't want to get those emails about you know, looking for a job or people having jobs or something like that. 
So just another option. So on to the first part of tonight's topic, uh, bostonwordpress.org. If you actually you haven't been there yet, so um, it's just soft. It's just a soft release, and we are running WordPress 3.0 beta on top of BuddyPress or BuddyPress on top of WordPress 3.0 beta. And we'll get to that in a minute. And right now, we don't have any issues. Um, there's no crashing. We tested out a couple of bugs, and we found a couple of them. We have to go through it. Um, but you know, we want you guys to join. If there's any errors, please let us know. Um, and uh, nope, so some tools for freelancers. Um, so it's WordPress, and what's on, what else are you using? BuddyPress. You using BuddyPress. We are using BuddyPress, and BuddyPress is a plugin that you can use so that you can create some type of a social network. Think Facebook or Twitter, only built into WordPress. Um, and it's free. And it, yeah, exactly, it's free. Um, so WordPress 3.0, some of the major features. Um, the biggest one here is the merger of WordPress and WPMU. Now, WPMU um, stands for WordPress Multi-Users. A lot of uh, large institutions like Harvard implements WordPress MU or Google's multi-users so that different organizations can have blogs um, and they can run there separately from Harvard's own main blog. Um, but now with WordPress 3.0, you have the option of running multiple sites within one WordPress client. And you, if, you, if you have updates for plugins or if you have updates for themes, you can do it all on one site rather than going to each individual can you share content easily across the different sites that way? We don't know because we're not running new. We're only running one site right now. Um, I'm pretty sure, if not now, well, when it's released, it should be implemented. Yeah, they're all, as far as I know, uh, WordPress and new right now, all of those lead to the same <coughs> database, and the tables are named. So, so it's possible, I think there are plugins that let you do it. I'm not sure if that's going to change now, but I'm sure there's plugins that will let you do that. Um, the next one is custom post types, uh, CMS. Um, if you have a blog that's full of audio, video, podcasts, um, pictures, you can now separate your posts into separate categories, video post or a audio post. You can make these uh, separate, almost blocks within yeah. your dashboard so that you can organize these easily. Um, I don't know if you had yeah, it's sort of like a separate entity because right now WordPress allows you to create like either a post, which kind of has a chronological association if there's a date to it, and then a, a page, which is just a static piece of information. With the custom post types, that really makes WordPress more of a content management system and not so much of a blog, only a blogging engine. You can create these new like types of, of content to be posted. So you could create something like an event. I think we have a screenshot of it later on. Yeah. Too, but you can create like an event, and you can say like an event has an event title, an yeah. event date. And so rather than just writing a new post or writing a new page, now there's an option that says create a new event. So it's actually a new type of, a new piece of content. So you define the properties of the page. Exactly. That's in 2.9. Is it? Is it? No, custom content. <laughs> It might be. Have you well, experimented well, with that? Yeah. I mean, that's a plug. Custom yeah. post. My uh, Custom post and custom taxonomies have been slowly working their way into the infrastructure for a while, but there's well, always you. a UI problem how to integrate them well and make it easy for people who don't understand them to use. So it's it's a constant evolution, and 3.0 is just one step closer to making it very tightly integrated. Um, better navigation customization. So. Uh, in your dashboard, you probably have a lot of windows, um, you know, about your WordPress stats, or how many posts you have, comments. Um, what you can do now is everything will be drag and drop, especially for your plugins. Um, you, you can move your different widgets or, or, or windows around within your dashboard menu, and you can further customize it, make it easier for yourself. And um, lastly, there's a new default theme. So instead of the you know, generic blue, uh, hello world, welcome to WordPress <laughs> theme. Um, they actually have a new one. Uh, which one? Let's, let's see if that. There it is. It is a uh, 2010. And so you actually have um, a nice little banner here. It comes with a couple of pictures. 
Um, it has a nice wider layout, single column calendar. Um, and this is built in, it's better, in my opinion, it's a lot better than the standard <laughs> mode. Um, so great, great job from Automatic for integrating a, a better default theme. So went over the merger of WordPress and Mew. Sure. Yeah, so for those who are new to WordPress or don't understand this, we, we go through this a lot. Um, there's there's WordPress.org and there's WordPress.com, and a lot of people don't understand the difference. So just to clarify, WordPress.org, they, they're giving you the software of WordPress to then install on your own server and, and run your own sites and do as you may. WordPress.com, they're, they're hosting it for you. So it's the same software, but they're running it for you. Just go up, you go there, you sign up, and you have a blog instantly. You don't touch any code. You don't any servers or anything like that. So we, we usually focus here on WordPress.org because people are looking to download it and customize it and do things like that. WordPress.com, you can buy upgrades and customize it a bit, but it's will kind of run into a wall where you can't do any more and you need to learn the other one. So just wanted to clarify that. Oh, can I just say that? Sorry. Um, just, I think you have to have a WordPress.com account to get the API key in order to Correct. Do your customization oh, yeah, that's on, a good on thing the .org. Yeah. So there's some services that .org needs, requires you to register at .com to get exactly. the, so key, the, the spam filter is the big one. Um, and then yeah, just a couple of mentions here is that so they're merging. So WordPress.com actually runs <coughs> WordPress MU, which is the code that allows Automatic to serve up I think it's seven or eight million sites that they're now running. Which is sort of free. And so now WordPress 3.0, they're going to merge that into, so it's going to be a single version of WordPress that's going to let you run one blog or millions of blogs if, if you want. Um, the two things they're not going to have yet, they mentioned though, is domain mapping. So when you install um, WordPress 3.0 and you set up multiple sites, you still are limited to only their subdomains. So if your domain is like example.com, you can have site1.example.com, site2.example.com, or you can do like a, a directory, so it could be example.com slash site one or slash site two. They still don't have the um, ability to make like any .com point to one of those sites you're running. It's a plugin, but it's not in the core yet. But now, uh, with my rewriting of Apache, couldn't you get around that? I mean, couldn't that do it for you? With some minor SEO implications, in these days you'd have to, uh, yes, but it's not a user friendly. Um, it's a very simple <laughs> Use the plugin. It's written by the guy that manages <laughs> Yeah, it's also a fairly straightforward thing for them to add, so I would expect to see it in 3.1. Yeah. And also cross site search, so I don't think you can search. If you have a network of sites, you can't search across them. Um, custom post types, post versus page. Um, it's not a true content management system, which is the second half of our talk. Um, and this goes back to, you know, in, inserting media, your video, audio. Um, how do you organize that, and how do you present that in a way to make your site not look like a blog? Um, again, back to the, the second half of our talk. Um, you put Flutter up there. Yeah, Flutter was a thing that, that a third party came up with that adds this feature. Um, now it's in the core, so you don't need that. I'm not sure what, what they're up to now, but because. Um, Drupal, which is a big competitor to WordPress, has kind of always posted that they had this content type thing. You could add all these types, and WordPress only had posts and stuff. So um, now, now it's built in, and you won't need any plugins for that. Um, any post type with specific taxonomy? Um, yeah, so go to the next slide. I'm, I'm curious to see. Is this what you were talking about in 2.9? So as you can see here, like for a real estate site, you can add a new property. And it has these features like it doesn't have a swimming pool and swimming pool type and things like that. Go on. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is I was really excited about. <laughs> um, better navigation, cumbersome, not flexible. Um, and this is going to be hard coded with the with the new WordPress 3.0 theme. Um, I think Google Yeah, because they actually so for navigation. Um, a lot of it was done manually, like if you wanted to change the, the links at the top of your of your site, like home, categories, about, things like the, the header and top navigation, 
A lot of that was done manually, like by, by code, by editing the theme or, or some themes, like pieces provide ways to do that. So Wu Themes, which is a, a company that produces premium themes, they developed a really cool interface to do drag and drop and to manage that. And Automatic liked it so much that they incorporated it into WordPress 3.0. So let's screenshot the next screen, I think. Yeah, so now you have this custom navigation and you can create hierarchies and drag things around and arrange your top level navigation and a lot of the navigation that you That looks very much like thesis. Like in their approach. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. I think thesis had the right idea, but I think Can you, can you use a graphic instead of text, or? Uh, I don't know. Not yet. Okay. New default theme. <laughs> Go with that. Um, and some minor features, custom background support for themes. So you can be able to change your background within your fixed width. Um, you can upload images, you can change the color, um, everything should be hard-coded into the actual WordPress dashboard. Um, Author-specific templates, um, if you run a blog or a website with multiple users who make posts, um, each one can have their own, I guess, uh, footer at the end of their post. Um, they can have their own little, uh, I think a totally unique page design, it's totally template. One can have one right justified, one can have one left justified. As soon as they log in, they should be able to have that. Um, and the ability to choose username during WP setup. Uh, the default is admin, um, and now you can change that whenever you install on a WordPress.org format um, on your own server. I think you, I don't know, I'm not sure if you can use it with WordPress.com. Um, that's, that's not out yet. And uh, it's actually coming out this weekend. <laughs> so, just a, a quick overview of, of what's to come. Um, be sure to update your WordPress. Um, it probably, you might experience some bugs when you, when you first start out, but your question. People who've uh, tried the beta, is it stable um, enough so that one would be okay updating quickly, or should one wait a while and watch everybody else crash? Quickly? So, we, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had any crashes yet. Um, we're, we're, I mean, we're running a really basic site. There's not a lot of posts, not a lot of hits. So we don't expect many crashes. Um, if you run a site where you might be getting 10, 20,000 hits a day, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. And a lot of large sites wouldn't run beta because of that issue. Um, they, they'd rather not have that downtime. Um, yeah, it depends on what you're doing. If you're running your own site and you like to hang around and experiment, then right. sure, try it out. I mean, know that if your site isn't working or stops responding, it might hurt your SEO if Google tries to index it and can get to it or something like that. But if you're running like, you know, large production sites, me personally, I always wait another iteration, like when 2.9 came out, I wait till 2.9.1, because they tend to kind of, with that point one release, clean up, clean up everything and make it, you know, production ready. And I'm the opposite, I upgrade right away. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as a note, always back up WordPress or install an upgrade. Any sense of what kinds of plugins you probably want to be particularly careful about when using it before an upgrade? The so uh, caching plugins right now are problematic. Um, or at the very least, you want to get like the most recent. I'm sorry. I said you want to get like get you know a development release of it. Right. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I know from my newspaper's website, we use a custom theme, which has a custom theme options page. So I haven't tested or used our test version and upgraded to three point but you might um, <coughs> just make sure your theme is compatible with three point because if the author has custom things in it, you might break like the theme page. So that if you go to, um, I know with ours, we have four windows at the top where we select a post and has a nice little image. And, the theme page might be broken, so you won't be able to change that. So just check with your theme on there. <coughs> it's always good just to set up a second version of your site on your own computer and just run the upgrade there and fool around with it so you know if something's broken and, uh, rather than doing it on the live site. I, I heard someone say, how do you back up your WordPress? Did someone say that? Um, you can 
actually export uh, all, all of your posts into an XML file, I think. It's, it's in the tools option. You can click export. It'll export all of your posts. Um, it won't save your plugins and it won't save your actual database. But what are your settings? What are your settings? But you know the, mo the most important part is your posts, you know, what you've written over the past <coughs> years. Um, you, you should always back that up regularly. And I think there's also a plugin WP database. Yeah. Um, you can always back up your database that way too and save it locally. Piggybacking off the plugin, like what percentage of the plugin are you going to Um, that's hard because there's a lot of plugins right now that are still broken for 2.9. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's a hard question to answer. Like from the must-have plugin, like the SEO, all the SEO, caching, the, the, the major ones? They, they, they should be fine. Um, if not, I'm sure they're working around the clock to try and get those plugins up to date. They want to keep their customers happy. So There's a list, right, of uh, 3.0 compatible plugins? Yeah, the WordPress.org plugin directory. Definitely check it out before you download it. Like, you're downloading it third-party site versus WordPress.org. Definitely check WordPress.org because they have like, people can vote and say like this is big and do like star ratings and comments and stuff. So you can, we'll see if you can see that as a result of install. Could you use a microphone? That, that's, how, that's how you find out, you know, does, does this version of uh, your plugin work with this version? Say, like, up to like a certain version. James, they can't hear you in the back. You might want to use the microphone. Oh. I'm done now. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's another question.